mostly on the utility side, which, uh, sorry, uh, consumer side, which makes sense. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, he has mentioned a 20% obligation from the users. It makes more sense when you talk these about these solutions on the uh, consumer side of the system. Okay, can switch. This is about yeah, slide. You can shift. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is about uh, brief about Unitron. We are we have almost uh, uh, installed capacity. It's about near about 4,000, 3,850 kilowatts, spreading over 290 sites. Since we have been exporting, our presence in India and outside also uh, is more than what we are doing in India. You can see here. We have about six models on our manufacturing uh, system. All, uh, I mean, we are adding very soon some higher capacity models. We are also manufacturing alternators for a German company for their wind generators. All our products are, uh, you can see, you need, uh, we, are, we have been empaneled by other con ministries connected to renewable energy rather. You can say MNRE like, M I mean, NREA is like MNRE in Egypt. And uh, Sri Sirim in Malaysia is like MNRE in what is it doing in India. This is our presence. And uh, we match, match up in terms of build quality to the more or less European standards we follow because turbines are also qualified IEC 61400 part two. So, which means we comply international standards. Why I'm showing this is to see the potential of uh, microgeneration on the what kind of applications what we have done outside, right from uh, mini wind farms to water purifications to telecom shelters to village electrifications, even Suzulon in Pune, one earth. Pro I don't know how many of you are aware of Suzulon's go global headquarters in Pune that is powered by our turbines. I mean, not entirely. It's about 10% of their <laughs> energy because they can't function in an urban environment. You can see those pictures. What is small and micro generation? This will, it's actually very simple. In a simple language, I put it here for you to understand. For different renewable energy technologies, small and micro makes a lot of difference. For wind, it is up to 100 kilowatt is known as small, but whereas for Solar PV, even few watts is small. And hydro, even up to 100 kilowatt, it is called micro. And small for hydro means it is 25 megawatt. <laughs> so it is not same in all the cases of renewable energy. See, no, the global potential, see, what uh, wind is nothing but indirect manifestation of solar energy. The globe of uh, the earth is une uneven heating of the Earth's surface is creating the wind forces, correct? So we, uh, the global uh, potential, the globe, uh, wind potential is 1400 terawatt. So now if you see the sun is radiating, bombarding Earth with so many kilowatts of energy, only 3% of the solar energy is converted into wind energy. And only 3% of that wind energy is sufficient to meet the global demand today. That means we can imagine how large is solar energy? Why small wind energy? This is a uh, World Bank survey, which shows it's only about 12 to 15 percent of the land mass of the Earth is suitable for large multi-megawatt kind of machines like Suzulon, Enercon, Vestas, and about 20, 25 percent of the land mass of the Earth is not good for any kind of uh, harvesting wind energy. But whereas 60-65% of the landmass is suitable for small wind energy. So you have, uh, you don't need roads, you don't need infrastructure, you don't need maintenance like, you know, large wind turbines, small wind turbines are virtually maintenance free, except for two or biannual inspection, nothing else. There are no hydraulics, there are no few changes, no gearbox, these are all direct drive and power electronics. 
This is a productivity estimate to give you an idea our big brothers versus where we are. That means per square feet of, I mean, per square meter of swept area, where we stand when we compare with our big brothers. You can see here, up to, it is not that we are competing with Suzlon or Enercon or uh, large megawatt scale turbines. It is, we are trying to fill the gap left by them because they can't work under low wind power density areas like the urban environment and all those things. So that is where we come. It is not that we are competing with them. We are filling the gap left by those big brothers. <laughs> so you can see here, uh, how the product, I mean, percentage between PLF achieved by small turbines and uh, larger turbines, you're almost two to three times more per low wind areas, low or weak wind regime, what we call it. 50 to 5,000 watts are best suited for low average winds and 10 to 100 kilowatt for better, more wind, per, I mean, higher wind uh, speeds. Actually, uh, wind generator blades are nothing but aerofoil, which is similar to your aircraft wing. What is uh, giving lift for an aircraft? Passing, this is giving you rotation. This is a basically the aerofoil structure is similar to an aircraft wing. Now, this is where we, we are, that small arrow marks which I have shown is that uh, you are, uh, oh, sorry where small winds will best fit in operating re regime. This is the world wind map. You can see uh, how uh, the wind speed spread. India, if you see, actually we are on the lower side if in, in terms of, see, it is only bluish. But still, we are number five in the world in terms of large wind energy harvesting. Because that few pockets of wind where we have, that is India. India's landmass that is, uh, has given us that edge. This is more relevant to us. This is wind map of India. That is that to at 20 meter height, which is more relevant for small scale harvesting. Now, if you closely examine the map, you will find at least at least 50 percent of Indian landmass is good for small wind energy. Entire coastal belt, most of the Karnataka state, Tamil Nadu western part of Gujarat. You can see some pockets in the north, uh, like near Himachal, foothills of Himalayas. So all these places, if you see wherever that bluish, what I, I told you about four to five meter per second, is more than enough. Now this is where we, uh, actually small wind is best suitable for combining with solar, because wind and solar energies complement very well. They don't supplement, they complement. So you, by day, day in and day out, or seasonal, whatever you may call it, uh, both have a very bl blending in, I mean, go hand in hand. So now this is what we suggest, how to mix the wind and solar ratios depending on your site wind speeds. Now, I don't know, Jaitrapur, um, the gentleman was telling, it was only working for six months. If, we, if, your, uh, if that client has installed wind and solar combination, you would have got power for almost more than 300 days. I will take you, I will take you to Jaitrapur. <laughs> oh, yes. So this is how the energy mix, wind and solar energy ratios are suggested. See, the power electronics have come so, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, they have matured so much, it is very easy to mix dissimilar renewable energies in terms of, uh, say, a microgrid or an island power, whatever you may call it, you can mix and match dissimilar, capa dissimilar capacities, dissimilar renewable energies. You can, you can parallel a 100, uh, 100 kilowatt system with a megawatt scale system or a few kilowatts with uh, hundreds of kilowatt. It makes no difference. So this is this uh, schematics. Those who are into power electronics, they can easily understand. I don't want to much elaborate on that. Because wind energy directly cannot be used, you need to condition the power be either before charging to battery or before feeding into grid. So they are very flexible. You can parallel wind turbines, small wind turbines like solar. 
You can have, say, several turbines on your rooftop and parallel them and to feed the power into local grid or charge the batteries and use for captive power, whatever it may be. Or you can combine with solar and parallel to the final, I mean, local grid. This is one of the applications how our Portugal client uses. He uses the power to feed the grid as well as off-grid, both. It is, he's having best of both worlds. He sells the power to the local grid as well as consume power locally when needed. This is a typical Irish installation where they use our small wind energy for heating because they're cold countries. So either infrared or the heating system of the house is supported by wind. So this will be useful for our uh, CHN glacier where our uh, army javans, are so they need heat. So this is one solution to our army javans to keep their uh, uh, shelters warm. This is a typical Irish home powered by a turbine. You can see here, apart from heating the house, they have about 2,400 kWh to give back to the grid and earn hefty about, I think, I, 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 uh, the utility pays about 22 euro cents there per kWh given to the grid. This is uh, for cathodic protection. That means, say, coastal areas, steel structures, all these can be, uh, see, corrosion is not an overnight activity or instantaneous. So as and when wind comes and goes, you can use that energy to prevent corrosion. This is a typical scheme for uh, purifying the water. This is done in uh, Greece, so, uh, remote islands on the Greece by our, one of our system integrators there. It's 11 kilowatt system almost producing almost uh, close to 11,000 liters per water, pot I mean, drinking water a day. It's, again, this is combined with solar. And this is wind electric direct water pumping. See, normally any induction, whoever, I think most of the management students here would have engineering background. Those who are into electrical and engineering, they will appreciate this. See, any induction motor or induction device where can be run at variable speeds. Only criteria is if you reduce the voltage, you have to reduce the frequency. So V2F ratio, what we call, is to be constant. So wind is naturally acting like an AC drive, like an industrial drive. So you can directly run uh, submersible or surface pumps using small wind energy. This is if, if the uh, capacity pump is higher, you can parallel the wind turbines, again, coupled through an AC drive. This is the Suzilon project, which I've been talking. Uh, our first, India's largest hybrid system, I would call it, 155 kilowatt. It is powering up, up uh, its entire, their server, street lighting, indoor lighting is completely supported by this 155 kilowatt hybrid system. This is the Suzilon campus layout. If all the yellow dots are wind turbines around the campus. You have to keep wind turbine above the, any obstructing structure. So we have to use tall towers there, at least to keep at least nine meter clearance from the highest roof element. You can see this. So it's a 25.5 meter tower. This is the picture, you can see this skyline. This is another view, solar on the rooftop. 55 kilowatt, so without any guy ropes. Those who are familiar with Pune skyline, they can, uh, they can recognize Sayadri range there. This is another rooftop system installed for Gamesha. After seeing Suzilon Gamesha energy, they are also into megawatt scale wind turbines. They wanted, so they have done it. This is a smaller project. It's a grid tied system. Suzilon was an off-grid system. This is the solar and wind on the rooftop. And this is all that feeding the power to local grid. There are no batteries, you can notice. Whatever energy produced is injected into local grid. TNEB is buying at the rate of, I think, uh, 12 and a half rupees. This is your own Bombay city. It's in, installed in Gurgaon. Harris is the developers on the 24th story. It is powering up their uh, emergency li lighting plus lift, plus uh, common amenity lighting here in Gorega. It's five kilowatt wind plus 
three kilowatt solar. You can see this, this is from the rooftop view. This is in Thailand. It's a university building. Entire on the you can see small turbines around the water tank. It is powering up their uh, computer systems and some lighting. This is again a farmhouse with a rooftop, wind and solar. This is uh, our own house in Pune. We, I live in a 3,500 square feet penthouse. Re Since January, I have not drawn a single unit from grid. I have used all energy efficient devices. My irrigation is powered by BLDC pumps, rooftop garden, you can see here. I'm coming to it, you will see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, see this, all this garden is powered by that uh, solar wind energy only. This is the uh, mini wind farm. This is uh, putting several turbines together is known as mini wind farms. This is uh, installed in Thailand, Pattaya. It is a 0.4 megawatt power plant. This is, now you can appreciate what I've been telling, comparison of power output from small turbines as well as big turbines. You can see below four meter per second, we are better off. At higher the wind speed, okay, that is, that we are not into that, we are not talking of that regime at all. We are talking of four to five meter per second or maybe six meter per second. This is a typical layout of that. You can see the evacuation transformer, 22 kV line. And this is a, a simulated picture. This is what I want you to put it to the uh, Ministry for the Policy. We are all putting megawatt scale solar power plant. Every megawatt requires five to six acres. You have a long northern boundary. Anything on the northern boundary will not cast, cast any shadow on the solar module. Make use of the northern boundary and install small turbines and enhance the PLF like this. Solar power PLF drops drastically during lean monsoon months. So even 150 kilowatts of wind added to one megawatt of solar will act like half a megawatt PV yield during windy months. Because wind is cubic power. Solar has limitation of sun hours. So even 10, you can have, see already one megawatt Seldom achieves one megawatt, correct? People are putting 1.1 or 1.2 megawatt to compensate that PV in megawatt scale. Rather than that, add wind and use the same infrastructure to evacuate the power. And plus your plant power is also met by that. About 10% is lost in a megawatt scale power plant. This we are going, uh, this is why wind PV hybrids. This from here onwards, you can see, see both are very, uh, resources are complementary. Not only that, uh, in fact, uh, it's continuity of the power. It's longer battery life. People who are into batteries, they will appreciate intermittent charging for lead acid. See, today, majority of storage is lead acid battery everywhere in the world. Okay, lithium polymer and all those things are still a way to come, uh, become economical over. So, so it will enhance the life of the battery also. They, complementary, they complement each other why season-wise or whatever you can see, it's a simulated picture. Now, economics, people who want it. See, why we, why we tend to fail to understand is, today in our country, there is no 24-7 power everywhere, except you Mumbaikers enjoy 24-7 power. Even Pune, we have power cuts sometimes if you go. So you are putting some alternate in place. You are using some other alternate means to alleviate your power shortage, correct? So why don't you, uh, from your capex, why don't you minus that also? It is not fair that you straight away compare with utility scale power where there are gigantic power plants generating several millions of kilowatt and we are producing few kilowatts. It is that kind of, you can't say I'm, get, I'm getting from MSCB for three rupees, you match that price. That doesn't work. You have to minus that capex what otherwise you would have invest, invested. See, yeah, almost other alternatives are costing half the cost of renewable energy by the end of the year. 
when you can replace a CFL costing 10 times the cost of a glass GLS lamp, can't you invest double the cost than other alternatives which you have planned to uh, alleviate your power shortage? So the, we are coming out with new class of turbine, which is known as 3D blade. It is even more uh, slower machine, which will produce much better energy from the rooftops. Now this is small wind turbine potential. This table is important to you to know the statistics. Total potential actually is 36 gigawatt for small scale uh, hybrid systems. Uh, installed capacity so far is only 2,400 kilowatt. In that, our own state contributes to 1,500 kilowatt. The national capacity, ag aggregated capacity is 2,400 kilowatt. So there's still a lot more to go. So I think we may take some questions. Yeah. I don't think we have time, but I think Yeah, this is simple. It's over almost major increase what we want from the policymakers to take care of this. <laughs> and look forward to seeing this happen in our country also, grid feeding. If we continue to manage our energy like this, the, by year to, I mean, you know, climate change is going to drastically affect our country. So this is to give you an example how much, what is your carbon footprint for various usage of appliances. Even your air travel is not environmental friendly. So do it by Skype or do it by teleconferencing. That's all.